What's it like to live where you work? For lazy Americans, it's unthinkable. But imagine living and working at one of the biggest factories in the world, a workplace the size of Monaco. For these 17,000 employees, it's reality. They come from all over China, Vietnam, and France to work at this factory called Yupa. Workers craft coffee makers, American flags, and electric grills in staggering quantities every single day. But Yupa is more than a steady paycheck. It's home. People get married here, they learn government propaganda here, and the work never stops. Yupa's managers are on a mission to see just how far they can exploit human labor and bend workers' rights laws to explode China's economy into the realm of complete global takeover. Step behind the closed doors of a factory where everyone wears bright yellow shirts and is shot on sight if they ever wear orange. Welcome to the place that calls itself China Number One. Within the next hour, about eight of Yupa's 17,000 workers will have died from overwork and exhaustion. Every day, Yupa makes 16,000 irons. Every month, Yupa makes about 36,000 coffee makers, which is about one for every Starbucks in a five mile radius. And every year, these laborers produce enough body sweat to quench even the thirst of Shaquille O'Neal. Chances are you own something built in China. Since 2002, China has taken advantage of an incredible system called trade, which allows them to make goods for other countries in exchange for money. These factories are so common in China, there's a saying among the locals which translates to English to mean, I plan to inseminate my factory. Someone has to make sure that the factory's parts are always getting to the right place at the right time. This is Ming Long He. He's been working at Yupa since he was four years old. I am in charge of production control and control of production. If even a single department falls behind, I will be executed, and that is bad. If any of Yupa's factories run out of parts, then that means the Earth has run out of resources, since China is so massive. We steal billions and billions of tons of resources from our dumb planet every single day. There's nothing Earth can do about it. But hey, if we don't, then my job's on the line, and I'd rather not be fired. Today, a problem in the iron department needs ironing out. <laughs> Workers on the iron line are often strong and drunk. Their heads swim with beer and rice wine fumes so that they can ignore their dangerous and unsafe working conditions while handling molten, hot, and bullishly strong metals. Just now, I found out the main problems here at the iron department. One major problem is that these drunkards don't realize that you can make more than just steam irons from iron. Traditional plants use outside suppliers for their components, but not Yupa. They import all of their pieces from the rest of China, meaning their products end up being cheap pieces of shit. But sometimes even the suppliers can be dangerously low on stock. Here, Mr. He and the leader of the iron negotiate a treaty that will provide the iron workers with more booze if they stop eating the tin cans. But now the grill factory is low on a crucial component, enthusiasm. The grill team is notoriously lazy, choosing to only work 12 hours a day, and occasionally taking a Sunday off entirely. Workers make about 50,000 grills every day, or about 200 billion per month when adjusted for space inflation. Grills bring in $69 million a year, which makes Yupa say, nice. There's no wonder that this pissed off guy is so pissed off. Workers on the grill line are also expected to be strong to maneuver around all these heavy parts, so daily strength training, as seen here, is mandatory. Mr. Ye supervises 850 workers, and despite his name, is constantly pissed off. 
It just doesn't make sense to me. Is a hot dog a sandwich or not? No one here will give me a straight fucking answer. Mr. Ye is obsessed with quality control. His strategy? Call competing Chinese factory managers to challenge them to a gunfight over each other's resources. In a factory this big, it's incredible nothing has exploded yet. This is my dinner plate. You notice something? It's fucking empty. Because this worker right here is too much of an incompetent cucksucker to fetch me my dinner. I'm gonna jam these metal brackets into his eyes. These metal brackets are coincidentally used to attach the grill's core heating element to the frame. Mr. Hee has to find a fresh supply of grill parts, or else we'll end up with a lot of blind Chinese people. If I don't get the parts, then these glasses are gonna do fuck all against Mr. Ye's brackets. The first part to arrive to the factory are rifle bullets, loaded into AK-47s for security to use in case they spy any nearby Japanese citizens. The grill plates can also double as a club or a shield should any foreigners try to come to the factory and steal our designs. Power cords are also connected here. Hell, just yank out the wires to the battery! If you aim for the heart, it'll hopefully act like a taser and drop him to the goddamn floor. Here's the main action of the grill. Put the invader's head between the plates and smash it thusly. You can also cook food on the grill if you so desire. On a typical day, for every meal cooked on one of these grills, three people will be beaten to death with one. Missing parts is a big whoopsie-daisy for the factory, and it's up to Mr. He to measure just how much of a shit the company gives that he'll lose his job if he doesn't find them. This sad clip was of Mr. He negotiating rations for his starving family back home. Then, Mr. He heads home to a company-subsidized apartment, just steps away. His wife, Christine Winchester, also works at the factory. And so does his son, Alphabet Soup. His family and in-laws also live here, most not by choice, but it all comes together to help instill a fierce loyalty to the company. I am totally happy living here. It's just the best. I am in no way wanting someone to come and save me and my family. Uh-uh. Coming up in part two, find out what it's like to leave your entire family behind so you can live inside a glorified Ikea. It's a place tourists never see, the new face of modern China. Hungry for profits and ready to get together in small U-shaped groups. Near the city of Xiaomai, the Yupa complex sprawls for over 1.8 million millimeters. Vice President Michael Hu was invited to comment on Yupa's size, but his audio was accidentally muted because we outsourced our editing to China. There's about 60 to 70 assembly lines, which have roughly 25 to 30 workers, which by the Chinese government standards counts as almost 20 people. 25 years ago, there were no factories here, only farms. In the 1980s, the Chinese government decided capitalism wasn't so bad after all. The communist regime established so-called special economic zones, designated places to stack fat paper to the ceiling. Yupa, a Taiwanese company, moved here in 1988 and did absolutely everything in its power to rip off IKEA. Yupa operates as its own city, with restaurants, soccer fields, public execution squares, basketball courts, and living quarters for any type of family. Yupa uses mass production because it keeps costs low and allows more than one worker to work at a time.
Uh, is my mic working? Is it on? Uh, check, check one, two. Uh, you guys scheduled me for 8.30 and it's already 10, so I'd like to know if you've fixed the problem or not. I've Yupa's main advantage is operating as a shameless ripoff of Ikea, but its second main advantage is cheap labor, working for one on the dollar. Sixteen-year-old Mao Fen Guo left her family and came here in 2008, making her about 65 years old today. Guo wasn't just looking for work, she was looking for the fountain of youth, and got really, really lost along the way. In China, many families prefer sons to daughters. My mother only has two daughters, and she's always upset about that. So in order to make our family proud, I took a tire iron to her face and then fled here. Guao is a worker in training, with about a thousand other students. She'll get a college degree, putting her in massive amounts of debt that she may never be able to pay off without even the guarantee of a job. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the script from the episode on colleges in America. At the very beginning, I thought it would be very difficult, but it turns out that stabbing the biggest motherfucker you see in the lunch line with a sharpened spoon is still a great way to earn respect. Today, Guao and her cellmates are being taught how to use an iron in school, which is hilariously misogynistic. To stay protected in Yupa's walls, Guao must join a gang. I joined the blues because when they mix with the uniform, they make green, you know what I'm saying? Respect the headband. Also, the name's G-Wow now. It's got more street cred. Workers produce about 60,000 irons a day at Yupa, except on days off, where they only produce about 40,000. With over three steps of assembly, iron making is intricate work. Assembly first starts with a water spray unit made up of a series of springs. And, <coughs> uh, excuse me, I had something in my throat. The sprayer and spout join the handle and are placed into a giant heating unit. This is where the iron is fused with iron. Next, the iron's internal monitoring and spy hardware are attached to the base. Sometimes, if the workload is particularly intense, employees from the nearby New Balance factory will pitch in. A plastic buffer is placed on all of this to ruin any chances of the iron being recycled. Once everything is attached together, the iron can't help but squirt with joy. Faulty irons are either repaired, removed, or asphyxiated in a plastic bag to hide the company's shame. Oster Appliances have officially stated that if it weren't for Chinese labor, their irons would cost about 11 bazillion dollars, which is about one bazillion more than a standard iron. Like China, Wow is adapting to a world of high technology and gang violence. But as we'll see in part three, other employees are adjusting to the married life, because they're married to the company. Based in southeast China, Yupa is one of the biggest factories on the planet. Today, and every day, its 17,000 workers are getting the world ready for breakfast. In the next 24 hours, it will produce over 1,200 coffee makers for Americans to eat at breakfast time. Over the next 30 days, these assembly lines will produce 210,000 cappuccino machines and nine severed fingers. In the span of one year, nearly two and a half million coffee makers will pour out of Yupa, with an impressive failure rate of just 40%. And at the center of all this is Yong Li. Uh, it appears we have forgotten to hire a translator for Mr. Yong Li. Li's mandate is ridiculous and oppressive, 
Any and all problems that could hurt production must be euthanized immediately. Sorry, I didn't know you guys wanted me to speak English. I just assumed you guys would dub over me in post with a voice actor. To be fair, I am the only one in the factory who doesn't normally speak English. Today, the schematics for the rocket-propelled dildo have arrived, and Lee has a new problem. Retrofit the existing coffee maker parts and molds into sex toys capable of hitting Mach 2. Hundreds of potential jobs, and billions of Chinese won, in other words, hundreds of dollars, are now on the line and in Lee's hands. Adapting production lines is a huge portion of my job. Last year, we had blueprints come in for a batch of submarines. Entire submarines. I don't know how I did it, but somehow all those old steam irons made one hell of an underwater vehicle. Lee starts on the prototype with the main assembly. He doesn't start with the additional assembly because that wouldn't make any sense. If any of you watching at home assume that Lee would start with the additional assembly, you're a fucking moron. Lee has to get more parts from the supplier. It's a short walk, since Yupa has condensed 90% of China's industry into one warehouse. But along the way, someone special is waiting for him. The person helping him today is his cousin. These circumstances make Yupa one of the most awkward places of employment on the planet. With a workforce of 17,000, many of the original Yupa workers married each other and had children who would grow up to work in the factory. Eventually, it became too complicated to keep incest out of the bloodlines, so the workers just stopped caring about that sort of taboo. Yeah, I might be related to Yang, or I might not. We don't tend to really keep track of that sort of thing. Love is love, and besides, everyone knows cousins can't get each other pregnant anyway. They're incompatible. Li Yang works in Yupa's supply department. She first came to Yupa in the seventh wave of inclusive Yupa worker breeding. We fell in love at first sight. She smells a lot like my mother. To me, that's a good thing. Yupa management encourages these relationships. Well, it's more like they don't care. This is a factory in China. No one on earth cares about these workers' rights. We eat together, we bathe together. We even share the same piece of mint-flavored dental floss. The world is our burrito. Now that Lee has post-nut clarity, he's able to get some goddamn work done. I'm thankfully now able to build this thing without constantly picturing my girlfriend's boobs and butt and stuff. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen some big fat titties? They're the most wonderfully distracting thing on the planet. Big titty girlfriend or not, Yang's design needs to be successful, or jobs are on the line. I can either make the prototype as functionally cheap as I can, or I can outsource it even further to parts of Africa. Have you seen how much investing we've been doing over there? It's free real estate, baby. Weeks later, Lee has been fired. It turns out that creating a successful prototype may secure your job position, but it doesn't give you free reign to dump your testicles in the break room coffee pot. Well, you win some, you lose some, you know what I mean? I just wish I waited until the coffee was lukewarm. When the knobs are all polished, workers spring into action. Even though Lee no longer works at the factory, his prototype is still put on the assembly line. 700 units a day are produced, and Lee won't receive a single dollar for them. The factory won't even bother covering the medical bills for his scrotum reattachment. Now that Lee is jobless, he has more time to hang out with his girlfriend and her luscious cans. I'm thinking of getting her breast enhancement surgery for Christmas. I'm a big fan of gifts for both of us, and I'd eventually like to die smothered in them when I'm 95 years old. The couple plan to get married at a mass wedding paid for by the company. Dozens of Yuba workers will get married all at once, while thousands of co-workers watch. Holy shit, that's crazy. If we get married here, I'll stave off depression from being literally married to my job by remembering that lots of pathetic Americans get married at places like Disney World or the National Corvette Museum. A mass wedding is an ingenious way for Yupa to strengthen their indoctrination policies. And in, in the next part, we'll look at the food at Yupa, because I don't know how to end this. G goodbye At Factory City, the day has barely begun, and yet people are already being loaded into trucks. 
Chef Ching Mei Li already faces his first deadline. Li runs one of five independent restaurants at Yupa. Competition between them is in tits. Profits are terrible, and the food quality even worse. In Li's eyes, he's not just serving meals, but creating workable sustenance out of edible trash. When they don't eat well or eat enough, then they won't have enough energy to force down my food. It's a vicious cycle. It all starts with the meat, beef, pork, factory worker, then vegetables like bok choy, onions, carrots, wintermelon, and albino brains. We have all fresh seasonal vegetables here, except corn. Stop asking if we have any fucking corn. We don't have it. We won't have it. Suck my dick. Even though Yupa cranks out millions of food appliances every year, everything in Lee's kitchen is done by hand. 9 a.m. is known as slime time in this kitchen, because it's when everything starts sliding around to prep for service. I don't have enough slime! 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 In two minutes, a woman from the Ketchup and Mustard Bureau will deliver some condiments. And now, in about two hours, 6,000 employees will want those condiments on their lunch. Today's menu consists of chunky oil, beef slab, and gray pork stew. Add in some mystery greens, and you've got home cooking. Chicken bones and corn pops are turned into hundreds of delicious dishes. I don't have enough slime! I don't have enough They cook up dishes from Szechuan, Hunan, and Cajun regions and even make chicken tenders for picky children. We're hoping to eventually include Western cuisine, but currently I don't have enough slime! Lee's obsession with food comes from growing up hungry. I don't have enough slime! But food, bones, and every kitchen fixing is now in abundant supply. And Lee is able to feed every single Yupa worker, from the very slim to the extra fat. Lee's passion for slapping and molesting food is second to none. No cook acts and no dish leaves Lee's kitchen without his personal approval. It's slightly bland. It needs some salt, or some chicken stock, or maybe even some chicken salt. The special today is regurgitated pork. If you use meat that's already been eaten, it's cheaper, because you don't have to pay for the luxury of chewing. There's lots of ways you can save money in a kitchen, such as not having enough slime! Lee says if the pork isn't nearly liquid in texture, he sends it right back. The chefs know one thing. No matter how many corners I cut, or how cheaply I find the food, it's still better than eating at Burger King. It's almost 10 a.m., and the red team still hasn't served a single entree. Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, Chef Lee has noticed a potentially serious mistake. I noticed they undercooked the Wellington, and now table six is gonna get pushed back. This could throw off all of tonight's dinner service. Did I mention I'm out of slime? By 11 a.m., they load all the dishes into the back of a truck, which will slosh and spill around as the truck starts to move. Competition between the five restaurants at Yupa keeps prices low, although Lee's is without a doubt the most popular, as the four other restaurants are Burger King. Meals cost only 50 cents through company subsidy, which makes profit margins incredibly slim. Mr. Lee only has one obsession that keeps him up at night, and it's not the food, nor the profits. Oh, this is actually my part-time job. Full-time, I'm an astronaut for China's Space Force. I don't think I was supposed to be on Mars today. What's, the, what's today? The 14th? Uh, yeah, no, we're good. I've still got a week.
It's not long after lunch that Mr. Lee gets a call from the Chinese Space Force. They... left without me. The launch was yesterday. Shit. Feeding workers at Yupa is tough. But know what's even tougher? Trying to find Waldo before we fade to black. At the world's largest factory, 17,000 people live and work inside 1.8 square kilometers. Rush hour is a human trafficking jam, where just getting to work on time is a job in its own. Inside the Yupa compound, workers and managers need to learn to get along on a massive scale, especially the employees who don't like Chinese people. The man managing all of these work relations has an exhaustive list of tough duties, including teaching everyone the synchronized employee clap. Yashin Fu is the manager of employee needs at Yupa, including their recreation equipment, home amenities, and living cages. I have to find a balance between the employees' demands and the company's budget. The employees want beds for sleeping and fresh food to eat, while the company thinks a large bed of straw can cover both of those needs at once. It's a delicate balance. Leading them is like raising children. You should only beat them just enough to not kill them. Yupa's workers come from every part of China, including Beijing, Tibet, Shanghai, Xinjiang, the Senkaku Islands, Wuhan, and Mongolia. Wages back in the cities are typically higher, but Yupa's near monopoly on China's supply of the color yellow incentivizes workers to sign up and receive an employee uniform worth nearly 800 US dollars on the local market. Mr. Fu's job is to meet every employee's demand. In the last month, he's thrown 1,652 birthday parties, organized 200 major gaming tournaments, and wrangled up 17 different ponies. We're now going to the workers' dormitory. It always smells like piss and I've been stabbed here twice. But for the employees, it's home. Fu is the landlord, but also in charge of decoration for these rooms. He doesn't try very hard. Average rent is only $6 per month, but the type of accommodation depends on their social credit score, otherwise known as Chinese fun bucks. Fu pays a visit to Ji Wow to remind her that gang fighting must be done only during designated gang fighting hours. Fu's primary mode of transportation is the Fu Mobile, a highly modified American golf cart capable of doing nearly 90 miles an hour. Most of the time, I use the Fumobile to drive between the dormitories and the cafeteria. Sometimes during slower work days, I take the Fumobile on the highway and see just how fast I can push it. I got it to top out at 93 once. That was a wild ride. One time on the freeway, I gave my buddy OJ a ride. And that, well, that didn't turn out too well. Yupa has very strict rules guiding food vendors. With so many competitive restaurants, food selling is designated by zones and by permits. Alongside managing living quarters and providing for employees, Mr. Fu's third duty is kicking ass. Mr. Fu spots an illegal food cart and sizes up his opponent. This woman is a foot shorter than Fu, so he's about to turn her asshole inside out. Off camera, he snaps her neck. Fu spies another cart, but this one happens to have all the proper permits. This woman's colostomy bag proves that she's tussled with Fu before, so she was careful not to make the same mistake twice. Fu makes sure that this restaurant is serving food and not reconstituted garbage like last time. My current kill count is 41 broken bones, six concussions, 14 knockouts, two fatalities, and once I hit someone so hard they threw up. I made him eat it. He won't fuck with me again. But there is one thing Fu wishes he could participate in alongside his employees. Soccer. 80% of Yupa's employees play soccer, but unfortunately, Mr. Fu isn't one of them. I wish I could play soccer with everyone else. I even dream of it. But unfortunately, I just don't have any damn legs. 
Not into soccer or a double amputee like Mr. Fu? There's plenty of other activities for your leisure at Yupa. Oh, there's plenty of other things to do. We also have a basketball hoop. And, uh, uh... Life at Yupa is hard. Work is regulated. Food is regulated. And even the housing is regulated. Because if it's not, Fu is there to dish out a regular-sized ass-beating. Women, children, my bosses, I don't give a shit. If you break my rules, I'm gonna slap you around. In fact, I think the sound guy for this interview is not properly wearing the standard employee uniform. When we wrap up here, I'll probably kick a couple teeth in to let him know just what I think of those pajama pants he just tried to slip past me. Up next, we look at how Yupa adapts to survive pressures from the outside world. In the global marketplace, there's no room for second best. To survive, companies need a competitive edge. Like most China-based companies, Yupa has copied their design plans from others and produced them using cheaper parts and labor. But recently, they also learned how to pirate Blender and want to use it to make products of their own. Yupa has to create a new generation of products to survive in this harsh capitalistic climate. Otherwise, their entire staff will be assimilated into a makeshift military branch and be forced to invade the coasts of Japan by 2052. Yeah, look mate, well I've played a bunch of Warzone, so I think I'm ready to fire that gun at any bloke you point me at. Ji Rong Pen is another nerd we spoke to, and is vice president of product innovation. Have you ever used those little corn on the cob holders? I invented them. You're welcome. Mr. Pen says his staff are usually too poor to afford corn on the cob, but he's proud of them nonetheless. Mr. Pen's team holds countless meetings about studying Yupa product consumers. I remind my staff every meeting of all the wonderful things I've invented. Fuzzy slippers, OxyClean, trapdoor shoes, cocaine, the Pokemon Silcoon and Cascoon, spiders, gravy, the Declaration of Independence, and China. Penn and his designers are making a new solar-powered product, because we as a society have finally begun to realize that sunlight is totally free. Remember that time I invented the sun? You do now. Just be grateful I let you use it without charge. Going solar may seem obvious and affordable, but when your country houses nine different cities with smog levels ten times higher than World Health Organization guidelines, sunlight is a precious commodity, and you've got to design for it. I'm very proud to be working on a product that I invented, inside a factory that I invented, alongside the employees that I invented, using technology that I invented to invent things. Using the design specs, a computerized rinsing machine, uh, no, excuse me, milling machine, cuts a foam cast. And the cast is converted into a baby's toilet seat. Smoothing out this seat is this man's only job. Coffee, stairs, the Galapagos Islands. It's incredible what you can invent when you only sleep two hours a night. Now engineers must... Uh, hey, what's with the subtitles? That's not what I'm saying. I I've been narrating this program for nine fucking years, and you guys can't even properly align the subtitles with my script. Are you joking? This is one of the most unprofessional productions I've ever been on, and I hope the studio shuts this entire thing down. Okay, thank you. And finally, Mr. Penn's masterpiece is ready to be revealed. What the hell is that thing? Okay, wait, he's swapping some parts here. Maybe it's not finished. Uh, nope. What am I looking at? Since this is my last interview, I think I'll just list everything I've ever invented. Allen wrenches, gerbil feeders, toilet seats, electric heaters, trash compactors, juice extractor, shower rods, and water meters, walkie-talkies, copper wires. If these strange, nearly useless inventions ever catch on, Yupa could eventually form its own self-serving government and rise up to become its own nation independent of China. 
because that always works successfully. It seems impossible to believe, but with Factory City in full swing, and other modern factories following its example, more products than ever may be boasting a Made in China label. Factory City represents an almost unimaginable form of productivity, having your workplace also dominate your home, social, and culinary life. For most Americans, the idea seems unthinkable. Instead, they'd rather go the sensible route of monetizing all of their hobbies, sharing every single part of their day to strangers online, and spending all of their time outside of work or school trying to figure out how to make more money. We hope you've enjoyed this look into China's strange and foreign workforce. Now stay tuned for our highest rated show. Dramatized versions of people you'll never know get paid to embarrass themselves for your amusement because you're better than them.